Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video. Could not get one out yesterday, I apologize about that, was just busy with school. I am in fact a little bit uh, frustrated and stressed with school. <laughs> I'll probably maybe make a little rant video about that because man, college is, uh, is not fun. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the New York Giants. And as the title suggests, we're here to talk about that $40 million in cap space that Joe Shane mentioned he will attempt, not attempt, but he will have to clear up for the New York Giants. There will be moves um, effectively in that $40 million because that's a really big number that may upset some people and will definitely hurt the team in the short term. But the hope is that in the long term, it will be better for the health of the team um now of course something similar happened when brandon bean got to buffalo in 2017 joe shane being the former assistant general manager of buffalo i think they cleared up somewhere around 50 to 55 million dollars in cap space and it definitely hurt them in the short term but i mean long term wise you look at buffalo now clearly one of the better teams in the nfl and the giants cap situation is pretty bad i'm pretty sure we're either in the negative or we, I've seen numbers saying that we're negative 10 million in cap space. I've seen numbers saying that we're like 13,000 in cap space. And that's a confusing thing, kind of a big disclaimer that I'll put in this entire video here as I will attempt to show you how one of many ways that you could get to that $40 million number is that depending on what, what website you go, depending on what resources you use, I don't think there's one consensus number on the cap. And that's always been the case for like every single year that I've looked at the cap space um, and try to deal with it and whatnot. And it's something very confusing that admittedly, I don't completely understand either. Um, even now, after three years of doing YouTube and, and three years of having to go and look at the cap and whatnot, I, I kind of leave it up to the professionals, I'll be honest with you. And at the end of this video, I'll give you guys um, a method or, or you know a series of moves that one particular Giants Beat reporter did that I think was the best I've seen out there. Um, and it's actually kind of better than mine. But, you know, like I said, I want to take a stab at it. Uh, you guys let me know what you think. And I, I guess let us get into it. But but once again, the cap is just really a different type of beast, a different monster. Kind of complicated. I got my little piece of paper here. Let's start right off. There's a lot of easy cuts the Giants can make on their way to clearing up $40 million. Uh, the first one being Caden Smith. He has a cap hit of $0 with a dead money of zero and a cap savings of 2.54 million dollars right there so that's what we're going to be keeping track of that cap savings number we want to get that to around well not around two or above 40 and right now uh i'm getting my numbers from overcap.com next up darius slayton uh this was somebody that i didn't think the giants would cut until i saw a twitter post suggesting it and it makes a lot of sense he has a cap hit of fifty eight thousand dollars with cap savings of two 0.54 million as well julian love is the next one cap hit of 192,715 dollars cap savings of 2.54 million dollars once again then riley dixon a very popular name basically since the season began i want to say uh to be cut cap hit of 320,556 dollars cap savings of 2.8 million then you got uh, Devontae Booker, another name that, uh, well, this was back when we signed him. People were like, what kind of contract is this? Well, luckily for us, he gives us some cap savings. His hit is a million and the cap savings is $2,125,000. Then you got Kyle Rudolph is the next one. $2.4 million cap hit, $5 million cap savings. Sterling Shepard, this probably is going to be the first one that's kind of going to hurt, but... I think we should all come to terms with it. I think we should all realize that uh, Shepard isn't exactly going to be somebody that's going to be on this team long term. I mean, I'm wearing a shirt with him. Shout out to Diggy uh, for this shirt right here. But with the amount of injuries he has on his body, um, a couple of years ago, he was considering retirement. And that was because of concussions, not even because of the injuries, you know, like actual ligament, tendons, muscle, bone injuries, whatever the case is. Sterling Shepard has had a lot of them and it's just not really a good idea to, to keep him on and at his cap number even though it's kind of cheap for what would be a number two wide receiver he's just somebody to be gone and he saves us 4.5 million dollars i i really don't see a way where stone shepherd is on this team come this fall unless he does like some type of crazy out of the blue restructure uh, but who knows if that's gonna happen 
And now we get to it by that point alone, you add those numbers up, and I believe you get to around $22 million. So we still have $18 million to go. Where in the world can we find a, a number like that? And that's where kind of the next two players come in. And I put a trade question mark label next to them because if anybody decides to trade for them, it will be the better for us because we at least we get something back. And I think you guys know who the next two players are that I'm talking about. Uh, first one up, James Bradbury. There's literally, I've been trying to think about it. I'm like, once again, similar to Sterling Shepard, unless there's a gigantic restructure that saves us a bunch of money that I am certainly not smart enough or I don't know enough about the cap to kind of go into restructures. So like, oh yeah, I will say, I, I probably should have said this at the beginning, there are no restructures in mind because it's just way too complicated to get into. And I'm going to leave that to guys who have more experience, a la the one that I'm going to show you at the end of this video. But unless something like that happens, James Bradbury is gone. Uh, there's, And I don't want him to be gone, to clarify. If you've watched my streams, you know this. I love James Bradbury. I think James Bradbury still is that cornerback that we saw in 2020. And I think that without a doubt, he could succeed in, in uh, Martindale's scheme fit I, it's kind of a myth in my opinion that he can't play man coverage when he is a man corner it's just that he had his best year in zone without a doubt under patrick graham but he's the biggest cap casualty um in my opinion because you can't afford to let go of a guy like leonard williams when your defensive tackle room that interior d-line room is now very weak it's literally just leonard williams and dexter lawrence um, and that's it austin johnson is free agent you don't have anybody behind him and you're going to need to build that back up uh, the other big cap hit on the roster overall is Kenny Galladay. You just signed him, and you're going to want to get at least one year out of him to see what he can do if healthy with your quarterback. want to see if he could actually fulfill that before you try and get rid of that man. Um, and with James Bradbury, just like Blake Martinez, who I'm sure you guys know is probably the next person up here, they've already restructured their contracts twice. So you got to think to yourself, would they even agree to another one? It's just a lot of factors to get into. But if you cut Bradbury or trade him, hopefully, to get something back, you'd get $12 million in cap savings. And then for Blake Martinez, you get $8 million. And those two alone carry us from like $22 million to uh, $42 million. Those two guys alone would account for $20 extra million dollars on the roster. So if we're going just by cuts and trades, this is the way to go. Of course, you could throw in Saquon Barkley in there as well. Um, but for some reason, on overthecap.com, it, it said $0 when I traded him. I'm not sure why. Maybe that's a glitch. But uh, if you trade Saquon, you could probably replace Martinez. That way you keep one of the best players on your defense. Because I'm going to be honest, um, even though both of them are big uh, options for cap casualties, your defense is going to be completely different and it's, it's going to be a gutted defense for sure. And, but hey, we are in a rebuild, are we not? We're probably going to see a lot of gutting of this roster. Maybe we should expect that. But now for the better uh, option and the better method of the two, I want to give a you know shout out to Patricia Tain Trainer of uh, Sports Illustrated over there on Giants Country. And this is what she did. And I honestly liked it a lot. It involved restructures. The cuts were kind of similar to mine, but and I'm sure you guys are going to like this one better as well. Like I said, I'm going to leave the restructures up to the guys that have the more resources and understand a bit more. This is what she did. So with Bradbury cut, um, I'm going to assume maybe it's a slash trade, but cut. So like I said, you get $12 million there. Uh, Nate Solder's contract is void. You technically don't get anything back in savings, but he's off the books. I mean, you could consider Nate Solder off the books for mine as well. I don't even consider that man a player for the Giants anymore. Then you got Shepard cut, and they, they get $8.5 million back from Shepard because it was a post-June 1st uh, cut. Maybe I should do that as well because that does give me a $4 million extra. Even if I change it, I would still need to go to Blake Martinez and James Bradbury, though. But smart one right there, right? Post-June post -June 1st cut. Martinez, she restructured so that his savings gives us $3.4 million. Uh, Rudolph is cut, so we get that $5 million. Dixon is cut, we get that $2.8 Williams is restructured so that we have, this is a hilarious number, $6.66 million. And then Galde is restructured as well so that we get $7.5 million. And you add that up, you get $46 million in cap savings. So an even bigger number than I have, but also, like I said, probably a smarter way to go about it. And, and this is not even a video of saying which one do you guys prefer. I think without a doubt, everybody prefers the one off from Patricia Trainer here. I just want to take a stab at it and see how it goes. But without a doubt, as you can see, you're going to face at least one 
move that's kind of gonna cut you the wrong way in James Bradbury. So we'll see how it goes. I hope the Giants can figure it out. I hope Joe Shane can figure it out. Um, and Kevin Abrams because he's still technically our cap guy. But we gotta get to forty million dollars, and I think um, that we probably or they should have a plan in place before the draft with a lot of the moves done before the draft, you know, now considering things like post June 1st cuts and whatnot, but we're going to have to do it. And it's just that the team is going to look very different and probably going to be performing very different. Uh, come this fall should be expected of a rebuild. It looks like we are uh, once again in that full rebuild mode where the roster is going to be completely overturned. We shall see. Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think, Giants fans. That's it for now. And I'm out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.